Hi, I'm Andre with Envato, and today we're going to be talking about audio. How do we get our audio sounding good once it's out of the camera? It would be nice, obviously, if we could just plug a microphone into a camera, shoot, and all the video and all the audio would be perfect. But if you've done it before, you know that there needs to be some tweaking. In this course, we're going to be taking DaVinci Resolve's Fairlight using some of the tools like the compressor, limiter, noise reduction filters, EQ, to get our audio sounding pretty fantastic. So come along, let's put on our headphones and jump into the program. Welcome to DaVinci Resolve 17. I hope you are doing well. And if you've never used DaVinci before, navigating to this page is really simple. All you need to do is use the icons along the bottom. So we have media, cut, edit, fusion, color, deliver, and fairlight. So you just need to select fairlight and it'll be brought to this page. So before we get editing, let's have a quick overview of what's going on here. So at the top here in this block, we have our meters, which give us a visual representation of what's happening in our timeline. So what I mean by that is if we play through, we, before, you know. we will get meters going. So we have our meters, our bus one, control room, and loudness. And we can toggle this on and off through here. And so we have audio one and audio one here. So if we add a track by right clicking, you'll see automatically it'll pop up there. So hit Command Z to get rid of that. And next is our mixer, which is right next to the meter icon. And it's located at the bottom right hand side. So we have effects, dynamic, EQ, a bunch of sweet tools we'll be using to sweeten up our dialogue in this course, as well as some faders to adjust our audio levels. And if you notice, there's a bus one here and a bus one there. So in Fairlight, the bus one is actually a main out. It's the last point of exit for the signal to leave the program. So if we play through there needs and we adjust the bus course, to nothing, we won't get a signal. So what I like to do before I get started is rename bus one to main out actually. And you'll see that it pops up right here as well automatically. And it just makes things a little more simple. It makes more sense to me. You don't have to do it, but I like to do that. The next thing I like to do is set up the project for what I'm working in. So in this example, I'm creating something for YouTube. So I want to adjust the target audio level to minus 14 luffs. And that is because if I make this too loud, YouTube will master this and I'll find a bunch of artifacts that I don't really like. And we can avoid that by going up to File, Project Settings. And you'll see right here under the Fairlight tab, target audio, sorry, target loudness level. And we want it to change it to minus 14, just like that. And then come down and hit save. The next thing is to right click on your clip, normalize audio levels. Now this says minus 12 and I want to bring this down to minus eight. And now like anywhere between minus eight or seven is totally fine. And now we can start listening to our track to see what we need to do. So let's see what's happening. Hi, I'm Andre with Envato. Now, if we look at our meters, we can see something going on here. We're only getting one side of our audio, and you can probably hear that in your speakers as well. Now, to fix that, you just have to right-click on your clip, go down to Clip Attributes, and under Audio, you'll see Format Stereo, Source Channel, Embedded Channel 1, Audio 1 left, and so under Embedded Channel 2, just send Channel 1 to the right-hand side as well. And now audio. We how got do we get our audio both channels working? So the first thing that I like to do when I'm dealing with audio is going to the dynamics panel, which is the compressor, limiter, and the expander gate. And the way you do this is in the mixer, it's right here. And if you don't see it, you can scroll up and down using uh, either your mouse pad or trackpad. And if you don't see it still, these three dots, and you can find it right there. So go ahead and double click and open this up. And this can be kind of overwhelming. All of these um, 
effects can kind of be overwhelming, but it's really not that complicated. The idea is less is more. So let's go over the dynamics channel, the panel, sorry, and talk about what's going on. So this is the meter that meter, uh, monitors your input signal. And this is a graph that shows you a visual representation of the change you're making. So if we turn on the limiter, we'll see a graph. Now there's gain reduction. So every time you are adding one of these effects on, you're essentially removing uh, volume or gain. And the way that they're organized is the one on the left goes to the expander gate, the one in the center goes to the compressor, and the one on the right goes to the limiter. Now I've talked about re gain reduction, and the makeup is to adjust for the gain that is lost. And we can do that with this slider right here. So for example, if we and play that clip, once it's out of the camera, we it can would really, be nice. Obviously, we can raise it up if, right away. If sorry, we could just plug a microphone into a camera right away, like that. Shoot, and all now, the video. That would be a little ridiculous, got. but it's just an example of what's going on. So the output is the signal after everything. It's where you can use the makeup, uh, gain makeup, to monitor what your changes are. And then we got a side chain here. So the first thing we're going to do is use the limiter. And what a limiter is, it says, "Hey." I don't want the signal to get past this level and cuts it off at that point. Now, you really don't need to use this all that much. In all of these effects, you kind of want to use sparingly because too much you're going to create a sound that makes an effect more than a subtle difference in your audio. So if we go ahead and turn this limiter on, you'll see that this blue line and greenish yellow line come up. And this yellow line is our audio signal, where this blue line is our threshold, the moment that the limiter is kicked on, essentially. And if we turn that on and play it through and have it really advanced, uh, not really advanced, but really heavy. It would be perfect, but if you've done it before, you know that. You'll see that it's like kind of intense. So if we double click on that, it'll set it back to its default. And we don't really want that either. We want to set it to around minus 15, just one step above our target audio level, just to have a little bit of headroom there. So we'll do that. And then let's talk about what the attack, hold, and release are. So we see them all along here, and they all mean the same thing, but just they correspond to their, um, their effect. So the attack is how fast, when it, the threshold is hit, does the limiter get kicked on? The hold is how long does it stay on for? And the release is how gently or abruptly does it stop or fade back into its normal sound? So if we listen to this clip. Hi, I'm Andre with Envato. And see the game reduction we're meter. Be talking about audio. It's working really, we... really slightly. And that's kind of what I like to see. I don't want to see it too much. If it is, I'm going to start hearing things that I don't want, want in the audio. So let's move over to the compressor. And the compressor's this baby blue line, which is the threshold here. And the compressor says... It allows you to bring up the lower parts of your clip or your track, and it still it maintains the level of your the loudest parts. It's a great way to to bring up. So the human voice has some dynamic range to it, and sometimes we whisper, and sometimes we talk more boisterously. And the compressor allows us to make those levels more consistent. So the threshold here is minus fifteen, and the ratio is two to one. And what that says is for every two decibels over the threshold, it'll be reduced by half. And the two to one is really, really mild. So let's bring that up to three to one. Or yeah, let's stay here at three to three to one. Sorry, I'm so bad at that sometimes. You get our audio sounding good once it's out of the camera. It would be And that's nice not really doing much, but if I if we play this through and I play around with this threshold. Obviously if we could just plug a microphone. It's working all the time. So if we just play, go, if we just scrub through. Audio, be perfect. But if you've done it before, you know that there needs to be some tweaking. We scrub In this through. course, we're going to be taking DaVinci Resolve's Fairlight using some of the tools like the compressor, limiter. And that's kind of how I like seeing it. Just slightly turn filters, on. EQ. And that's to get good to me. And for most of these things, I leave the uh, defaults as is because they sound really great. And now we can move on to the expander and gate. This is a big lifesaver of a effect for me. Most of us are recording in apartments and untreated rooms, and we're constantly dealing with background noise, whether it be a CPU fans, wind, or just a fan we forgot to turn off in the background. 
What's great about this is that the default setting of minus 35 decibels in the threshold is actually perfect because most of the sound that we're trying to get rid of is around minus 30 to minus 40. Like that background wind sound and computer fans, that's pretty much where it's situated between those things. Now, the expander is much more subtle and the gate is pretty aggressive where you can adjust the fall off. So if we take a second and listen to those two back to back, we can see the difference. So this is without anything. Hi, I'm Andre with Envato, and today... So you can hear that background noise, and if we turn on that expander... Hi, I'm Andre... It's very, very subtle, and you can see how subtle it is based on that yellow line. Now that gate, it really has that big, fast drop-off, so we're probably, it's probably going to get rid of everything. Here we go. Hi. Yeah, it gets rid of everything, so... Generally speaking, I leave this as is, and I try to be very gentle with the attack, the hold, and the release, and I move it around and find it where I find the speed spot I'm for my own clip. And I would do the same for yours too. Just play around with these things and get familiar with them and know what they do, and you'll have a really good Hi, you'll have I'm a really good success them. rate with them. So this takes a less is more approach with editing. We don't want to add too many new artifacts. We would rather just take a clip Auto, that we're happy with and give it more presence audio. and personality. So if we see our gain reduction meter going overboard, it kind of signifies that we've used it too much and maybe we should pair back a little bit. So after all of that is done, it nice, it's time obviously. to use the gain reduction meter and the output to, you, uh, to make adjustments to our gain makeup. And in this case, we're yeah. trying to hit around minus 14. Plug into a camera. So let's add about 1, 1 1.1, 1 1.2 to our gain makeup. We don't want to see any Shoot, red lines. All the video and all the audio would be perfect. But if you've done it before, you know that there needs and to be And I am tweaking. really happy with in that. In this course, we're going to be so taking... So let's the jump into the equalizer and start making adjustments to our frequencies. Before we do that, though, let's talk about presets. Creating a preset is a great way to speed up your workflow in Fairlight. So say you've been recording in a similar environment and you just don't want to do this every single time. All you have to do is go up to Fairlight, Preset Library, select Audio 1, and use the drop-down menu to decide what kind of preset you want to uh, make. In this case, it's Dynamics. And then say Save Now. And this pop-up will occur, and we can either create a new one or update. And I'm just going to update Andre's Easy Preset here. And then you are good to go. This course is brought to us by Envato Elements. Elements is a subscription-based service that provides assets to content creators and video makers alike. It has tons of sound effects, royalty-free music, stock footage, and templates. And for example, if we go to Video Templates and go down to DaVinci Resolve, you can see thousands and thousands of wonderful professional templates that can aid you in your video creation. For example, we have Seamless Transitions, which works with a drag and drop system and it just gives you wonderful, easy to use transitions that would be very hard to animate on your own. So make sure to check out Elements if you're in the market to look for assets for your videos. Let's get back into it. So we can go over to the mixer and open up the EQ. And if you don't see it here, you can just scroll up and down or again, use this dot, dot, dot and find the EQ right there and then double click. Now, this can seem kind of daunting, but let's just go over the, the layout of the equalizer and then we can talk about how it works or how I use it to edit my dialogue. So you can toggle it off and on with the equalizer switch right here. And then we have equalizer type. And this is organized into four elements, earth, air, ice, and fire. I always leave it at earth. I believe they are made to mimic other modules. And then up at the top right here, there is a reset button. So say you make some changes over here and you don't like it and you want to bring it right back, just click right there and you are good to go. Now, this is the graphic equalizer. So say if we grab two, three, four, five, these are all representations of the bands down here. So if we move two, watch frequency and gain move. The frequencies are left and right and the gain is up and down. So let's restart that and then go over to this slider, which is a gain makeup, just like the uh, one in the dynamics panel. We often, when we're changing and editing for EQ, we're gonna lose some of our volume. 
Now, there are six bands. One in six are very similar. They are high-pass filters and low-pass filters. And bands two to five are also pretty similar. So let's open up two, give it some shape. And you can see that there's a drop-down menu. Now there's a low shelf, a bell, a notch, and a high shelf. Now I always use the bell and I'll show you how I use it in a second. Now there's a frequency knob, which brings left and right. And also this L, M, L, M, H, and H. And this will make your, your band switch along the frequencies over here from low, mid, low, hot, mid, high, and high. So just like this. Now we have gain and we can bring that up and down. And then there's a Q factor that also narrows and widens how much you are uh, limiting. So I'll, again, I'll bring this back to its beginning and I'm gonna put on a high pass filter. So that gets rid of frequencies below a certain rate uh, range. And with dialogue, you don't really need anything below 100, 120. So I'm just gonna take that using this knob and bringing it over to about 112 and that should be fine. So if we listen to our clip, Hi, I'm Andre with Envato, and today we're going to be talking. You're not, it's not going to sound much different with it on or off right now. It's very audio. How do we get our audio sounding good? Once right. It's... So how do we find problematic areas in our recording? Every microphone kind of has a couple of rough spots, and this is where I use the bell curve. And so I'll take band two, and I will bring it up, and I will turn the Q factor all the way up, and I will take the gain. And then I'll sweep it back and forth until I find problematic areas, things that sound kind of tinny or hollow. So if we listen. Hi, I'm Andre with Envato, and today we're going to be talking about audio. How do we get our audio? So usually between 200, 250, and 500, we'll find a couple areas. In this case, we found one right here. And I could just bring it down, right? It's at frequency 363. And I could just bring it down like this, but I'm going to lose my position. So let's bring it back up. Sounding good once it's out of the camera. It would be nice, obviously, if we could just plug a microphone into it. Right camera. there. And now I'm going to use the gain to bring it down slightly. Camera, shoot, and all the video, and all the... And I'm going to keep on doing that to the next gain, uh, so the next band as well. So curve, I'm going to grab number three. Audio would be perfect, but if you've done it before, you know that there needs to be some tweaking. In this course, we're going to be taking DaVinci Resolve's Fairlight using some of the tools so like the compressor, about limiter. right there again, I'm going to take that and use the gain to bring it down. Noise reduction filters. E right, and now we're going to move over to band four, and we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to keep on sweeping. We don't always have to do every single Q one. To get our audio sounding pretty fantastic. So... Come along, let's put on our head. Let's restart this. Hi, I'm Andre with Envato, and today we're going to be talking about audio. How do we get our... So what I like about this system and this technique... Sorry, I'm going to move my Q factor up. I forgot to do that. Audio sounding good once it's out of the camera. It would be nice, obviously, if we could just plug a microphone into a camera shoot and all the video so right the there again is another oh, problematic area to me so every microphone has its issues and we can fix it with this system and what this does for people like myself and probably you is that it gives you a tactile and visual representation of what's happening in your eq because hearing these things is like it's kind of impossible for a lot of people and takes a lot of uh, years of experience training yourself with live sound to hear and understand what the frequencies are doing so we can take that gain and drop it down and now we're gonna put that low pass filter on and let's listen again. Hi, I'm Andre with Envato and today we're gonna to be talking about audio. How do we get our audio sounding good once it's out? So that sounds pretty good to me, but I, now I wanna take the Q factor and I want to make it more wide because I want some more bass in it. So we take that, you can see we widen it up a bit. We can widen it up a bit, widen it up a bit. And now if we listen to it, Hi, I'm Andre with Envato, and today we're going to be talking about audio. How do we get our audio sounding good? So that's the steps I take to create an audio that I'm really happy with and dialogue. It's pretty simple. There's a few steps, but Fairlight makes it really easy to use.
Thanks so much for following along. Getting great audio isn't all that hard. By taking a less is more approach and starting with great audio, you're bound to have some good results. And if you want to stay up to date with more tips, tricks, and tutorials, make sure to like and subscribe to this channel. Thanks so much. I'm Andre with Envato.